Roosevelt, his public relations people, his doctor did conspire to hide the extent of his disability. He tended to minimize it. He did stand up and people, oh, he can stand. And the Roosevelt people would let on that he hopes to be walking unaided a year from now, that sort of thing. But they all knew that he had had this very serious physical illness. And in fact, the, the fact that he had had this illness led to this huge ovation for him at the National Convention that year because of his courage in simply being there. So it was no secret, but the newspapers from 1924 were thrown away the way newspapers are. And when he was president, no one was allowed to take pictures of Roosevelt in his wheelchair. He was in a wheelchair. Of the many thousands of photographs of Roosevelt that survived, there are only two that show him in a wheelchair. I've only seen one of them. I haven't seen what the, I haven't found the other one yet. I'm told on good authority that there are two. I've seen one of them. And occasionally, if somebody didn't know the rules and took a picture of Roosevelt in his wheelchair, the Secret Service agents, and they were able to do this in those days, just come up and grab the camera. And they'd tear out the negative or the glass plate and they'd destroy it. You can't publish that. And so he was able to get away with it. But it's a remarkable thing. Well, one of the things I have to figure out is, what effect did this have on Roosevelt emotionally? What did it mean? I don't know. And this is an aspect of my life that, fortunately, I haven't encountered. And fortunately, not that many people do encounter. So what does it mean for someone who is, all of a sudden, in the prime of life, unable to walk? At Roosevelt absolutely loved to play golf from the time he was a kid. Every spare moment was spent on the golf links in New York, around Washington, in Campbell, any place that he could find to go play golf. After he contracted polio, he never even spoke of golf again. It was too painful to think of the fact that he would never be able to swing a golf club again. So I have to figure out what to make of this, what to do with this, what effect did it have on his perceptions of the world? What effect did it have on the world's perceptions of him? Now, one of the things that I've tentatively concluded is that it probably had a greater effect on the world's perceptions of Roosevelt than on Roosevelt's perceptions of the world. The criticism of Roosevelt until the early 1920s was everything had been handed to Franklin Roosevelt. And most people who potentially might have voted for Roosevelt, let's say for president, most people had a hard time identifying with this guy. He was the rich kid. He was the blonde-haired, good-looking, Harvard-educated kid who had had his path paved with roses. And then, and then he came down with polio. And all of a sudden, the world knew that Franklin Roosevelt had suffered. Everybody suffers. We suffer in different ways. One of the reasons we vote for president, we don't vote for president because we think they have the best policy on this or that. We don't vote for president because they have the best resume. We vote for president because, when I say we, most voters, I think, and police perhaps could differ with me on this, but I think most people vote for president because of something in that president, that candidate, it makes them feel a certain way. They feel reassured. They feel as though this person understands them. They feel as though this person somehow represents what they want to be. Just take, I'll just pick one election out of the blue. The election of 1980, Jimmy Carter ran against Ronald Reagan. By no stretch of anybody's imagination, Democratic or Republican, did Ronald Reagan know as much, anywhere near as much, about policies, about governance, about the, what you really need to know if you want to manage the country? But Ronald Reagan won. Why did Ronald Reagan win? Because he made Americans feel good about themselves. After Vietnam, after the economic reverses of the 1970s. And that's a perfectly legitimate reason for voting for somebody for president. And when Franklin Roosevelt ran for president in 1932, he had less experience, certainly, than Herbert Hoover. Now, of course, the, the ongoing depression was a really big deal. And Herbert Hoover probably couldn't have beaten 
you know, the local dog catcher. However, people responded to Franklin Roosevelt at an emotional level. They responded because, and one of the things I'm going to have to sort out is, how effective was the New Deal? The New Deal did not end the Depression. And one of my big uh, interpretations of Roosevelt is going to be that Roosevelt, if America was the victor at the end of World War II, Franklin Roosevelt was the individual, the political victor. World War II saved Roosevelt's presidency, saved Roosevelt's reputation. If not for the war, Roosevelt would have left office after the 1940 election. He probably, almost certainly, would have been succeeded by a Republican. Much of the New Deal that hadn't already stalled would have been repealed. He would have been recognized as a two-term president. That's something there aren't. Not all presidents are two-term presidents, so that's in his favor. But otherwise, a dismal failure. Because the main thing that he was elected to do and re-elected to do was to cure the Depression, and he did not. The Depression was as bad in 1938 as it had been, almost as bad as it had been in 1933. But what saved Roosevelt, what brought the country out of the Depression, was the war in Europe. What allowed Roosevelt to run for a third term was the war in Europe. What lifted Roosevelt from the ranks of, I don't know, the equivalent of whom? Uh, maybe better than Ulysses Grant. But uh, you know James Madison, maybe. Madison was a great constitutional framer and founding father, pretty lousy president. Okay, Two terms, but lousy. Franklin Roosevelt would have been in that category, maybe worse, because he would have been president during the longest depression in American history. And in fact, there are economic historians, there were plenty of economists then, who said that the New Deal simply aggravated the depression, extended the depression. And Roosevelt historically would have had to deal with that. He didn't have to. The war came along, saved it, saved the New Deal, saved his reputation, and allowed Roosevelt to enter the ranks of the pantheon of the American presidency. Now, I've gone on much longer than I should have, and I haven't even gotten half of what I intended to tell you. I apologize for that. Do we have time for questions? OK, I'll be happy to try to answer your question. I hope I didn't wear you out sufficiently. Ah, there we go. Yes, sir. Yes. David McCullough once said that uh, you had to feel history in order to understand it. Is there an event in your life that made you feel about history to where you wanted to spend a lifetime studying it? Uh, I can't point to a particular event. I can point to a period in my life that made me decide that history was interesting. And it had nothing to do with school. In fact, it was beyond school. After I. Uh, finished college. I graduated from college with a bachelor's degree in 1975. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And um, my family, I mentioned my father earlier, one of the reasons he was a staunch Republican was that he was a self-employed businessman. He, there's a family business. And I was raised to go into the family business. I have the same name as my father, who has the same name, had the same name as his father, had the same name as his father before him. We were Henry William Brands is right down the line. I have reason to believe that I'm actually Henry VIII. But <laughs> anyway, for want of something better to do, I decided to try my hand at the family business. The family business at the time, it's evolved. The family business at the time was the import and wholesale of cutlery, knives and scissors primarily, with a little bit of hardware thrown in on the side. And everybody who entered the business, especially members of the family, started at the bottom. Actually, I started in the, the warehouse when I was about 10 years old. And I spent every summer working for the company. And then when I got out of college, I was advanced to becoming a salesman on the worst route that the company had. This was the way my father was going to break me in. So I said, fine, I'll do it. My route covered the territory from Portland. The, the company is based in Portland. I grew up in Portland, Oregon. I mean, it's based in Portland. I got territory that stretched. It was a thin territory. It stretched from Portland to Denver, ran across the Great Basin. There were hundreds of miles between accounts. And so I spent about, uh, well, most of a year traversing the territory from Oregon to Colorado. This is in the mid-1970s. Cable television had not yet been invented. 